when should you abandon an animation project? That's the question I'm going to be answering today. First, I want to say that I think there is a point in time when you do need to think about abandoning your project, but it's like one of the worst case scenarios you can imagine. It's a huge waste to not finish a project. You're choosing to not be rewarded for potentially hundreds or even thousands of hours of hard work you put into a project. That is a catastrophic thing to happen. So I do think there are conditions under which you should consider abandoning a project, but I think that a lot of people, uh, they come to this point too early and they're too quick to abandon the project and they also haven't trained themselves enough to reduce the likelihood of that happening. So because abandoning a project is such a horrible thing to happen, because of all the time wasted, we want to change our behaviour and decision making to reduce the likelihood of us abandoning the project in the first place. So I've created a few diagrams and these should hopefully give you an understanding of yourself and what you're going through. If you think of production stages, this is how we're going to base the timeline of the project and your mental uh, functioning during the project. I've left bits of this out, but the production is basically broken into these stages. You've got pre-production, production and post-production. Now, if you really want to get technical, you can change it to be pre-production, production, post-production post -production, and promotion because I feel like these days with the internet you're also doing the promotion work and that is part of the project. So promotion is things like uploading it to social media and you know uh, creating the buzz around it, maybe cutting a trailer together, that kind of stuff. Pre-production basically is the ideas, idea refining, writing, storyboarding, the animatic, I would say it goes up to the creation of the animatic and then from there it transitions to what I would call production which is things like the animation itself, the cleanup, colouring, voicing, sound, compositing, the backgrounds, this takes up the main bulk of the time. The post-production is the editing, colouring, uh, creating the titles and other things the sort of the aftermath that you have to do. In live action, the editing, the post-production is much more prominent. It takes longer to do, but for animation, most of your editing is actually done in the pre-production. That's how uh, the production process of them differs, the biggest way that it differs. Anyway, so now I've changed that to be slightly more in proportion with what it would actually look like for how much time you're devoting to each of these stages. You've got quite a lot of time for pre-production. In fact, the more pre-production you do, the better your project's going to probably turn out. And you've got the production itself. This is where all the really time-consuming tasks lie, so you will spend a lot of time on production. Post-production is smaller, and promotion is also quite small. Okay, so now I have created a graph which will show on one side your sort of mental attitude towards your own project. And this is really important to grasp because if you know yourself and you know where you are in the project, you know how you're feeling, you will actually be able to plan things around it and create tactics for yourself so that you don't fall into any traps and, and abandon the project. So the graph on the y-axis we've got excitement, motivation, self-esteem, your sort of attitude towards the project, really important. And then you've got the time on the x-axis. Uh, so this is over the duration of the whole project, how you feel about the project. So, I mean, this can vary for people, but I've just tracked a, a basic idea of what I think happens. So. Pre-production, you're going into pre-production really excited because you're getting these ideas for the first time and to you these ideas sound amazing. Excitement is at 100%, you're so excited. And this will last for most of your pre-production because you'll continually be finding ideas during your pre-production period. Now, it might dip a little bit once you are starting to set things in place for production. By the way, there is also a dangerous time in the pre-production, but I wouldn't even say it's dangerous because at this point you're not risking much work. So in the pre-production, you might also decide to abandon your idea, 
but that's all right if you abandon your idea in the pre-production it's not a huge waste of time because you've just come up with the concepts and it's a good exercise but you haven't put too much invested too much time into it production okay you're entering into new territory you're doing new things you're actually being able to start to make the things that you uh, have been planning that's pretty exciting so your excitement your motivation will go up again it will kind of peak again but then quite quickly during the production period I would expect that your motivation your excitement for the project will start to go down you will start to see errors maybe in the pre-production things you hadn't planned for things going wrong that you didn't account for at first so it will sort of slowly go down and when it hits this period this critical period that's when you've got to be careful and I'm going to get to what you're meant to do at these periods but right now you just have to recognize that they will happen in your project so this might happen for quite a long time you'll be chugging along this is probably the most likely time that you will want to abandon your project you might want to stop working on it you might want to take a break life might get in the way and it might postpone things for a while very dangerous time then what happens is when you start to enter into enter into post-production, you start finishing off scenes and your scenes start to look really nice because you've got all the coloring and they're becoming fully realized. Now, when you in the pre-production, you kind of imagine what the scene might look like when it's finished, when it's got all those finishing touches. Now you're in the post-production, you actually start to see your dream come to life and it's a magical experience again. So your excitement for the project starts to go back up, it starts to peak again. It could be quite significant. You're seeing it fully realized and it's amazing. You start to really appreciate, oh, look, we've come a long way. Not only that, but in post-production, you are actually becoming quite close to finishing. And that is a promising thing. When you realize that you've done the, the, the majority percentage of the work already, then that's quite motivating, I think, mentally. Then it might dip a little bit again because, you know, maybe you have to watch over the clips quite a lot. You might start to see errors. You might have the urge to go back and fix those errors. You can't fix all the errors. There are going to be mistakes in your animation. And you've got to kind of accept that. Now, the promotion is a really weird time, I feel, because when you are, say, uploading your animation to YouTube or something, it's like all of your work has gone into this one file. It's a file, it's like an MP4 file and it sits on your computer. All of a sudden it just becomes like you don't really value it as much because it's when you look at it, it's just a file. It, okay, it's uh, 300 megabytes, you know, and it's just quantified in that way. So you sort of you're less precious over it when when you hit that stage and you know maybe you feel like you've already crossed the finish line when actually you need to put be putting things out on social media you need to be promoting it you might not have expected that at first because you feel like you've already crossed the finish line so your motivation might go down a bit if during this time you start to have real doubts about whether other people will like it that's often a trap that people fall into and that's where it gets them is that they have the final video, they can see the flaws in it and they feel like other people might not enjoy it. I'm going to get onto that later, I'm going to go back to that topic, but I, I'm basically going to tell you what you need to do when you're faced with that problem. So now I'm going to tell you at each of those stages that we've talked about what you're meant to do to kind of reduce the likelihood of you abandoning it, especially in the difficult times. So in the pre-production stage, when you might be abandoning your product, your project, sorry, I would actually suggest that you just make the decision. You've got to reach a decision before you come into production time. Is this project the right one that you should be making? Is it ideal for what you should be spending the next however many months or years making if it's no abandon it start again make another one you should abandon it now rather than later if it's not then make a commitment to yourself 
to finish the project. You've got to say to yourself, I am committing. And then tell other people that you're committing. Hold yourself accountable. That should really help. It should secure you to actually make it because now people are going to be expecting you to make it. Okay, so the other critical time when your motivation is at an all time low, you might have to draw loads of frames or edit loads of frames. It's very tedious. In this part of it, what I want you to do so that you can certainly not abandon it, you need to enforce routine. I can't stress that enough. You need to create a routine for yourself where it's rigid and you cannot actually choose to not work on it. So you have to, you know, set yourself, set aside a certain amount of time per day where you've got to, you're not allowed to do anything else during that time. That's one method that you can use. And then for the last say 20% of the total production of the film, you need to tell yourself that you're nearly there. I think that's a really good motivation. You just need to say, nearly there, I'm nearly there. That really helps, okay? So you've got to keep that thought in mind that a little bit closer and you'll be getting all the rewards of actually having your animation made. That's the graph for you. I want you to also be aware now of some other things. Above all, the biggest factor of finishing appears to be the length of the film, the runtime. Longer films are much more likely to get abandoned than short films. On longer projects, the issue is that this graph is stretched over a longer period of time. The worst part is that the, the lows are typically spread out. Now, when you have long periods of low self-esteem, low motivation for the project, you're far more likely then to abandon the project because you, if, it, if you go too long without having a spike of excitement in the project, that's really bad news. So. One of the best solutions I can recommend is to whittle your story down to the essentials. Do not linger. Make it as short as it can be to tell the essence of the story effectively. Shorter animations will have an exponentially higher chance of getting finished. So just keep that in mind. So now for the actual answer to the question, when should you abandon an animation project? I want to make a distinction that I didn't make earlier. When, when I refer to an animation project that you take on, I'm talking specifically about your own self-funded project. That should be when you're able to make the decision whether to abandon the project or keep going with it. Now, when you are working for a client in a commission, the option to abandon a project is not an option at all. You cannot do that. I would never advise for you to abandon a project which a client has already paid money for. If they are staying true to their agreement with you, then you need to stay true to your agreement with them. Anyway, there are a few conditions under which I would abandon a project. The first one is the quality of the story and the execution so far is drastically worse than the current standard of your work. So much so that you would be embarrassed to put your work, that you, the work of this project onto your showreel. Do not continue a project like that. It, in those circumstances, it's not worth it. You should actually move on to a concept, uh, a story that you are happy with, that you actually think is good, that you would be proud of. The other point is, if very little or nothing about the story interests you anymore, the emphasis here is on you. If you have doubts about whether other people will find it interesting, but you are interested, you should ignore your doubts about other people not liking it. Trust yourself, okay? So if you find it interesting, that's all you need to know, you should carry on making it because you will have doubts about whether other people will like it. If you still like it, keep going. 
Now, here are the circumstances under which I would recommend that you halt production to pick it up at a later stage whenever the circumstances change, but not to completely kill the project. Keep in mind that stopping work production on a project is dangerous for the project. It increases your chances of not picking it back up again. So that's why I'm very against stopping production. I don't believe in taking breaks. I, I don't think it's, it's a good idea to have a so-called much needed break from your project. That's a bad idea because it's all about momentum. You've got to keep the momentum going through this project. So if you have a circumstance in your life where something threatens your basic human needs, if any of them you need to see to them right now, go and do that. Put your project on hold while you do that. The other one, if you have a huge incentivized opportunity to work on another project which is time sensitive and might not happen again, and it has to be time sensitive, then I would take that opportunity first and put this project you're, you've got going on the back burner. But it has to be time sensitive. If this opportunity will wait for you, then continue production on your own project. If it's an opportunity that comes around regularly, such as a monthly or a yearly competition, that's not enough of a reason for you to stop, um, continue production. But if it's something that is a, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity, it's not gonna happen again, take that opportunity. Uh, special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are now supporting me especially to Joel Ukeni. I've just seen his Instagram profile. I'm going to link it below. It's really impressive. Go check it out if you like. This week, there's going to be a special video going up for Patreon supporters. Here's a trailer I cut together. Please enjoy. It's the kind of sketchbook that I'm not expecting to show to anyone. I don't impose any strict routine on it or anything like that. It looked really nice from my point of view and I just wanted to capture that down instead of taking a photograph. It would hopefully give you a window into my mind. If you want to support these videos and give something back, if you want to show your appreciation and get some rewards while you do it, there is a link in the description that you can go to where you can check out our Patreon page, see what kind of cool rewards you can get, see what we're working towards and pledge a certain amount so that these videos can keep coming out every two weeks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.